Bitcoin is bad for the environment. Bad for the environment. But it's also affecting the environment. Bitcoin is bad for the environment. If I got a dollar for every time I've heard that, well, maybe I'd have a Bitcoin by now. If you've caught our earlier video on whether Bitcoin is a climate disaster, you may already know that Bitcoin mining is not as it seems in mainstream media. Well, recently, Virunga has become the first national park to run a Bitcoin mine, all with renewable energy, in order to continue funding efforts to protect its forests and world-renowned wildlife. If you're a nature or Netflix documentary buff, you may have heard of the Virunga National Park in Congo from a documentary produced by Leonardo DiCaprio and it aired close to a decade ago. The Oscar-nominated film followed the story of several incredibly brave park rangers who are grappling with not only a rebel invasion, but the overlooming threat of big oil all to protect the park and its endangered mountain gorillas. For those who haven't watched the film, what you need to understand is that Virunga resides in a volatile region filled with violent conflict and corruption. Virunga and the broader region continues to experience heavy deforestation up till today due to its rich soils which make agricultural exploitation all too common, as well as other resources like charcoal and rare or precious minerals. This is a problem because the Congo rainforest happens to be the second largest rainforest after the Amazon and is not only incredibly biodiverse and home to iconic wildlife, but also provides invaluable environmental services for the planet. Unfortunately, the previous few years have been tough for Virunga. From the 2018 rebel kidnappings, to the Ebola outbreak in 2019, and then two years of COVID lockdowns from 2020 onwards. Tourism, which makes up 40% of park revenue, had been grinded to a standstill for four years. All these, plus the fact that the Congolese government only subsidizes about 1% of the park's operating budget, have left Virunga in a dire state and in desperate need for money. It's not surprising then that just late last year, Congo's government announced its plan to auction oil leases in the country, many of which are located around the park and some even within the borders of the park itself. In the words of park director de Marode, Virunga would have gone bust as a national park if not for Bitcoin mining. According to Marode, Bitcoin mining was a happy accident for Virunga. You see, as part of wider plans to sustainably manage and harness park resources, there are plans to build a network of hydropower plants and to have electricity buyers and sellers grow gradually. However, there were two problems. First, plants have to be built first before buyers could slowly come in. And in the meantime, those plants would face the issue of being uneconomical as they would initially not only require upfront capital, but will also be generating excess power due to the lack of buyers. Two was that one of the plants did not have enough capital to finish construction to even turn the plant on. Well, this is where Bitcoin mining comes into the picture. That much needed electricity buyer and de Marode and colleagues landed on the idea of purchasing $200,000 worth of Bitcoin miners. In the words of de Marode, it dawned on us that this was an extraordinary solution, as this could potentially earn both short and long-term profits while being a viable way to profitably use excess hydropower. The idea was brought to life with the help of crypto investor Sebastian Guspilou, and the park's mining operations started in September 2020, when most of the world was still under pandemic lockdowns. Now, 10 shipping containers, each holding 250 to 500 ASIC miners, sit in the Virunga National Park of which Virunga owns three and Guspilu the rest. Virunga's three containers of miners have all Bitcoin profits channeled towards its operational costs, while Guspilu pays Virunga for its cheap hydropower to power the other seven and keeps the Bitcoin mine for him and his investors. So far, the Bitcoin mined by Virunga is immediately sold to fund operations, including paying for park salaries and infrastructure like roads and water pumping stations. The park also finally hit a stroke of luck because the time that they started coincided with when Bitcoin was just about to go on a major bull run. When the price of each Bitcoin sat at about $44,000, Demarode estimated that the miners generated around $150,000 a month, which is close to what tourism had provided at its peak. In total, in 2022, the estimated profit from the mine was 
$500,000, which was crucial money when COVID lockdowns had shut down pretty much all other sources of revenue. Of course, this often raises the question of whether Bitcoin's created price makes the operation financially sustainable. To this, Demerode points out that every day of mining is pure profit no matter what the price of Bitcoin is, as electricity is free for them. Turns out it's pretty difficult to be in the red when what you're doing is generating Bitcoin out of surplus energy that would otherwise have no value. It's a big difference from investors buying Bitcoin to speculate on its price. However, Bitcoin mining here is not without its challenges. What with the suboptimal weather, presence of rebel militia, and unstable internet connection. So by no means is mining Bitcoin here a walk in the park. Also, even though Varunga's mining operation is in the green as long as Bitcoin's price is not zero, it is still negatively impacted by the industry as a whole due to the bad optics from fiascos like the FTX or Terra meltdown and just the general stubborn perception of crypto's supposed outsized environmental impacts. And so this may reduce the willingness of other investors to fund the park. As with most things, the answer is not black and white and we're not trying to paint the picture that Bitcoin mining is the silver bullet solution to all our problems. But important stories like these highlight the other side of the picture and goes a long way in dismantling the stigma around mining. As the Marode emphasizes, Crypto isn't the sole answer to save the Virunga Park, but only a part of a larger eco-business model. And of course, importantly, it's not just about the wildlife, but it's about sustainably supporting the millions of people who live in and around the park. So if you're interested in more positive crypto stories, check out our video on whether Bitcoin is a climate disaster right here.